I really love to study the names of God while I'm digging through scripture. It's really important to me to understand the character of God because God desires to be known. And part of the way he reveals himself to us is by sharing his name with us. You, you tend to know someone a little bit more intimately when you know their name. So of all the names of God, my favorite is Jehovah Save, Lord of hosts. It could also be Lord of Armies, however you translate it. But what's really cool about this, first, Jehovah is to be, to, to exist, to be known. That's what God desires. But the Save part or of hosts is, it seems pretty straightforward, right? So God, when we talk about hosts, God can be referencing angels. He could be referencing heavenly bodies like the sun, moon, and stars. He could be referencing people or kingdoms. It could be grasshoppers in scripture. What God is really demonstrating here is his universal sovereignty. It's not just in earth. It's above all things, all created, the heavens, the earth. And it doesn't matter if it's what we deem as God's people or other people's on earth. We all fall under God's sovereignty. This is really, really important to grasp. And when we go to what we call the principle of first mention, which is the first time God's name is mentioned in the Bible, Um, there's generally some context with it. So the first time we see Lord of hosts in scripture comes in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 4 or verse 3. And that's where Samuel's dad goes up to Shiloh to worship the Lord of hosts. Seems really innocuous. And um, where it's really going, and you'll see it reflected in 1 Samuel chapter 1, but also 1 Samuel chapter 4, is where God is ushering in the monarchy in Israel. God is bringing the kingdom into being. And God is not just letting this happen. God, as King of kings and Lord of lords, is saying, this is kingdom work, and I am involved in kingdom things. We must be really careful as we understand God and his kingdom work, his universal sovereignty. We must be careful to realize that sometimes we step outside of what God desires. And we are not exempt from having those hosts come against us. So tomorrow in part two, I'm going to talk about God of hosts, the Lord of hosts, and how we look at that in Joel. So if you want to read ahead, start looking at Joel chapter two. We'll talk about that tomorrow.